28th verse. Romans 8 and 28. I'm going to give you something this morning to put some more meat on your bones. <clears throat> Thank you, buddy. You know, in the days that we live in, actually not just the days we live in, it's always been like this, but sometimes we have a habit of saying, you know, if we ever you know, needed to. I think Sister Cindy sent me a message last night said if I ever needed the Lord before, I sure do need Him now. There's a song that says that. Amen. Amen. Right. And there are times, you know, that we make those kind of statements, but really we've always needed, you know, as much today as we ever have. But anyway, I started to say that as the end gets closer, you're going to need God's Word more than ever before. And, you know, to some extent that is true. But we have always needed the Word of God. Amen. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, as we get closer to the end, and we're getting closer to the end, amen, right. and uh, we're going to need more and more of God's Word in our heart and written on the tables of our heart and in our spirit, amen, right. because right. there may come a time, Brother David, that you can't reach for the King James Version because they came and took them all, amen. Right. You're going to have to know it for yourself, right. amen. It's not going to be good enough. For you to say, well, I heard Brother Billy say, or, you know, I think Brother Billy might have said this, but you're going to have to be able to stand and look the enemy in the eye and say, God's Word says. Amen? Because that's what Jesus used whenever the devil came to Him in the wilderness. And He said, why don't you turn these stones into bread and, you know, you, you can eat them. You're hungry. I can tell that you're hungry. And Jesus spoke to him and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen? So this morning we know that we don't live by bread alone. Amen? We must have the Word of God in order to survive. Amen? If you have, you know, they, you see them on television, and for a while Jim Baker was offering these survival kits. Right. It had some dried food in there that would last for 30 years or whatever, you know, and all of that. And there might have been one in there, but I didn't see a Bible in that survival kit. <laughs> Amen. There, they had some, you know, some dried peas and some dried meat and uh, uh, this water that's supposed to last forever. And Lord, you know, I may be wrong, but I didn't see them say. And of course, you know, there's an old King James version in there too, so that you can survive. Amen. Uh -huh. Listen, I can survive without water. Amen. Yeah. I can survive without food. I'm talking about my eternal security. Amen. Yeah. I can survive without the things the world has to offer. But I cannot make it this morning without the Word of God. Hallelujah. It's the light to my feet. Amen. It's a lamp to the path in which I walk. It is my foundation that I stand on this morning. And if you stand on any other foundation other than God's Holy Word, your foundation will sink. Amen. Is sinking sand, Brother David said. So this morning we're going to look at a few things that all of us face. And going to look at a scripture that you've probably read it and already had the revelation of it. But the other day I read it for the first time. I read it over and over and over, I'm sure, because I've read it from front to back. But this thing jumped off of the page and got a hold of my old redneck and said, look at this. Have you ever seen this before? Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know yeah. That all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. Can we say that again? Yes, sir. Read it with me if you have it in front of you. Or maybe you know it by heart. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. All the things that I like, I didn't want to say this, is it? No. All the things that, you know, that go good for me in life, that's not what it says, is it? No. It says all things. That doesn't leave any room for anything to be left out. Right. All things work together for my... Well, Brother Billy, I just don't... Well, I can't help if you don't believe it. That's what God's Word says. That settles it. Amen? Amen. Somebody said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. No, no, no. You can take you out of the middle of the equation. God said it. That settles it. It's up to you to believe it. Amen? But it's still the same. Amen. It's still settled in heaven forevermore. Whether you believe it or not, whether you grab a hold of it or not, God's Word is still real. Amen. It's still the only truth. That's Amen. True. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16. You don't have to go there if you don't want to. Because this ain't really where we're heading this morning, but this here is the, right. the, the 
basis, this is the basic scripture that I'm going to be talking about on and off. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 through 18 says, Rejoice evermore. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. Come on. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Now we just read over there in Romans, the 8th chapter and the 28th verse, that all things work together no. for the good to those that love God and those that are called according to His purpose. Now we jump over here and we read, you know, here little, there little. Yeah. Take this precept upon precept, line upon line. We jump over to 1 Thessalonians and it says, in everything, now there's that phrase again. You know, he said in all things, there in Romans 8 and 28. Yeah. Then he says in everything, puts it a little bit different, but still everything. Amen. All things, everything. In everything, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Yes, sir. Isn't that powerful? Amen. You see, it's never God's will for us to complain. Uh-oh. All right. Oh, it's just the house down that time, isn't it? It's never God's will for us to bellyache and murmur and complain. It's always God's will for us to give thanks. Yes, sir. Brother David, I think, quoted the Scripture while he was up here leading some of the worship and said, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Nowhere in that Psalms does it say, Let everything that hath breath... When things are going good, praise the Lord. And when things are going bad, have a pity party. Come on. He said, when every, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Amen. Amen. In everything give thanks. All things work together for my good. Amen. All things work together for your good. Amen. Put your hand right here and say, all things work together for my good. Amen. Listen, do you, do you consider yourself part of this crowd? It says to them that love God. Do you love God this morning? Amen. Amen. To them who are the called according to His purpose. Yeah. Amen. Come on. So you're called this morning. You love the Lord. Yeah. All things work together for your good. You may not understand it. You don't understand it, do you? I don't understand it. Many, many, many times, and that's, that's a few... That's a few, you know, less minis than I need to throw in there. But many, many, many times, I don't understand it, Brother David. That's right. Amen. But I fall back on this promise. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I fall back on the promises of God. Because I know that His Word says the promises of God are yea. The promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God are forever written in stone. Heaven and earth will pass away. But His promises that He's given to me shall never pass away. Amen. His Word is for us this morning. Amen. That's right. His promises are for us this morning. That's right. You say, oh, Brother Billy, that was written some 2,000 years ago to different people. No, 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 no. This book was written to every man, every boy, every woman, every child, every, every girl. Amen. Every living, breathing soul on the planet that's ever been born and that ever will be, be, that ever will be born. This book and His promises belong to you. As Peter said on the day of Pentecost, to to your children and your children's children to the ends of the earth to whoever the Lord God shall call. Amen. Amen. And he calls you today. Yes, sir. No matter who you are, no matter where you're at, the Bible says, let whosoever will, let him come. Yes. Amen. The calling today is not just to the Pentecostals. Amen. Come on. Not just because you really ain't a Pentecostal. That may be the church you go to. That may be the name you've slapped on yourself. But you just you just a human like the rest of us. Amen. Aww. You may go to a Baptist church, but that don't necessarily make you a Baptist. Amen. You may go to a Pentecostal church, but that we just define ourselves in those manners. Amen. Yeah. But when we stand before God, we don't stand there with a little name badge on our chest that says Billy Douglas Pentecostal. Amen. Or Billy Douglas Full Gospel. Or Billy Douglas, you know, a uh, 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 Baptist. Amen. We stand before God, children of God, washed in the blood of the Lamb, with no denominational tag on us whatsoever. All, right. All of us are called. Right. He's calling us right now. Whosoever will, let Him come. Yeah. His voice rings out through the Spirit from the throne, just like it always has to the heart of man. Whosoever will, yeah. let Him come. That call is for you today. 
That call is for you. That call is for me. Amen. Amen. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me this morning to 1 Kings, the 20th chapter. 1 Kings, the 20th chapter. Remember those Scriptures that we just covered. Amen. All things work together for your good. In everything, give thanks. Amen. Amen. 1 Kings, the 20th chapter and the 26th verse. And as we normally do, we're going to pick this up right in the middle of something. The Israelites, the people of God and the the Syrians are getting ready to battle. They've already had battle before and the Syrians got their tails kicked. Can I say that? <clears throat> now listen to what it says here. You might find this interesting. 1 Kings 20 and 26. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Benadad numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. They get ready to battle again. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. You hear that? Yeah. But the Syrians filled the country. Yeah. So here we have this massive army of the Syrians. And what did it compare the Israelites to? Two little flocks of kids. Amen? Come on. Have you ever felt that way before? Amen. Have you ever felt like you was just surrounded by the enemy? Right. Amen. That you were so outnumbered there ain't no way you was ever going to win? Come on, say. Do you ever feel like that there's so many of them yeah. and so few of you? Amen. Amen. Right. Did you ever feel like there's so many against you and so few with you? Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Y'all might have to excuse me this morning for acting crazy. Hallelujah. And there came a man of God. Oh, don't you wish there was more of them in the day that we live in? Amen. Oh, we got snake salesmen, amen. And we've got we've got, you know, uh, soothsayers, and we've got those that put on the show and, and, and those that will will try, you know, try and sell you something, but we got very few men of God today. Come on, brother. This is verse 28. And there came a man of God. Listen to this. And spake of the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Because the Syrians have said, Now listen, I want you to listen to what the Syrians thought. Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, mm -hmm. but He is not God of the valleys. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Amen. Therefore, this is the Lord speaking, Yeah. Will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand? Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> yeah. Not just of the mountains, but of the valleys as well. Come on, say it. What had the Syrians said? If you'll jump back to verse 23, this is what the Syrians told the king, his servants. It says, The servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain. And that word means valley. Let us fight against them in the valley. And surely we shall be stronger than they. Oh, my. Did you hear that? Oh, my. This enemy believed that their God, oh, He was God of the mountain, but He wasn't God of the valley. If we can get them down in the valley, surely we can defeat them then. Oh. God's response to this was, because the Syrians have said the Lord is God of the hills, mm 